Welcome to the film room. In this session, we're going to break down transition offense and talk about how you can get the two most high quality shots in basketball, which are layups and catch and shoot threes. But first, a word from our sponsor. Coaches, if you're looking for a new customizable board, then Hoops King is the place for you. Their website is easy to navigate and you can customize your board down to the most personal details. And having a two-sided feature will allow you to keep track of everything that you need to come game time. And you can select your line options. So whether you're in high school, college, or the NBA, there's a board just for you, which is one of the reasons the Los Angeles Lakers purchased their boards from Hoops King. And I can personally guarantee you that the logo that you customize on the website will look exactly the same way in person, if not better and they guarantee swift delivery so you'll have your new board within 10 days of ordering. The link to their website is in the description or just type in hoopsking.com. Now there are several ways that you can get into transition offense, but we're going to start by talking about live ball turnovers. This is a situation where you get a steal and you need to take advantage of it and get a good quality shot every time. And the number one thing in these situations is what I call the first five steps. When you secure the ball, the first five steps that are taken by guys without the basketball are going to determine what type of advantage you create. So players have to understand that those first five steps that they take are pivotal. And even if you're behind the basketball, don't give up on the play because you might end up getting the ball late. Transition is so random, and so you can never assume that the defense is or isn't going to do something. Here on this live ball steal, you'll see this wing on the opposite corner that takes off and sprints, and none of the defenders even notice that he's back there, and he ends up getting a layup just because of those first five steps. And the next key in these situations is balancing the floor. Depending upon how many defenders are back, you need to try and get as far away from your teammates as possible to make it hard on that defender to pick who he's supposed to guard and every situation is different. That one was a two on one. In this situation, you're gonna have a three on two. Notice how the guard pushes to the middle of the floor, the wings get wide, and these defenders get stuck and don't know who to pick up, and it makes it easier for the guard to make the right decision with the ball. So balancing the floor needs to take place in those first five steps. Notice how the big runs straight to the rim, you get your wings to run wide, and it allows that guard to see this mismatch and throw it ahead to the rim run. These small adjustments in your spacing to balance the floor make a huge difference. Notice how on the change of possession, these two wings are running right next to each other. So when the ball gets thrown ahead, this guard dribbles back to the middle of the court to pull the help defender with him, and that's what opens up his teammate for the dunk. Establishing width in early transition is always going to help make reads easier, and that's because you force the defense to make decisions. When Roach gets wide, it pulls this help defender over and that opens up this rim run. But in a similar situation, as soon as the ball is stolen, this wing sprints out to the exact same spot, the defense collapses on the ball handler and it opens up a rhythm catch and shoot three. Another way that we can score in transition is by having what's called an advantage situation. This typically happens when an offensive player shoots it and falls down and there's no foul call. Now we have a five on four advantage and we need to get a good shot early in the possession. What typically happens is they're going to man up with the ball, they'll take whoever is strong side in a two on two matchup, and on the back side we have an advantage. I like for these three players to get to the rim, the corner, and the wing. And the reason I like those three spots is because it creates the best spacing. Now the first thing we should always try and do in transition is advance the ball by passing it. It's always going to be quicker throwing the ball up the court than dribbling it. So once we get it across half, they've manned up on the ball and the strong side corner, but the bottom defender doesn't get all the way to the hole and that opens up this rim run for a dunk. These situations are always going to be random, so having good spacing principles is important. Here you've got three wings on the same side. The guard does a great job of advancing the ball by a pass, and then we get into a situation where there's three on the same side and two defenders that can guard all three of them. So the middle player cuts to the rim to create better spacing, and he ends up scoring a layup because of it. I can't stress how important it is that in situations like this that you recognize the advantage and you maintain good spacing. In this situation, Miami gets a 5 on 3 because both of these players fell down. So they end up covering up the two strong side players and on the back side you should have a rim run, corner, and wing. Both of their trail players end up running to the same spot, which turns into some poor spacing, but because their two wings went to the corners, they end up still having a good outlet for a catch and shoot 3. 
but the majority of the time you're going to have a standard fast break situation where it's five on five. Now the majority of coaches will teach their team to crash three players to get offensive rebounds and then have two players get back. So this is typically what you're going to see in transition. And the first thing we need to do is get the ball to the outlet or someone who can push the ball up the floor. The faster we do this, the faster we can start our break. The next key in our transition is advancing the ball with the pass. Like we talked about earlier, the ball always moves faster through the air than on the ground. And if you can throw the ball ahead, oftentimes it will beat the defense down the court and you'll be able to score before they get set up. And the last component of our fast break is having good spacing. And the reason I believe in having the spacing of a rim runner, two guys in the corner, one guy at the wing, slot, or trailer area is because defenses are taught to stop the ball and pack the paint. And if you can go to these spots, it stretches the defense. If you watch basketball long enough, you will see this scenario happen over and over. Getting good spacing while the defense all runs back to the paint and then they're just scrambling to try and stop the ball. They leave guys open on the perimeter, they fly at the wrong people, and you end up getting open dunks and threes just from having good spacing. And something I like about this is that it creates consistency for your offense. Guards know that when they get out in transition, if they don't have a wide open layup to run to the corner and or the wing. The guard gets it ahead, and one of those guys is probably gonna be open for a shot, or they might be able to drive a closeout and it makes the job of the point guard a lot easier. He knows that his wings are gonna be running wide to the corners and the wings, and as he pushes the ball and gets it to half court, he just needs to recognize if the defense is covering the midline, because if they're not, that rim run's gonna be open. So I encourage people to practice going through your progressions. The first place you should always look is the rim run, then you work to the corners and the wings. In this possession, the rim run's not there, the wings aren't open, but everybody collapses and the trailer ends up being wide open for a catch and shoot three. Then here's an example of the defense actually doing a really good job of covering up the rim run and the wings. You'll see as the point guard comes down that they scramble to get everybody taken care of. They're pretty much matched up on the perimeter, but nobody accounts for the point guard and he walks into a wide open three as well. And I love the small details of this possession. Notice how this big pushes his defender underneath the basket, probably fouled him a little bit, but he did this intentionally to gain this advantage on his rim run. He knows he's gonna be open and the bottom defender is so worried about the corner man that he never gets to the midline and it creates an open layup. Another thing about this perimeter spacing that helps is it spreads the defense out for dribble penetration. Notice how all three of these defenders are all running to the perimeter to guard their matchup and the point guard basically gets a one-on-one -on -one situation with very little help. Transition defense is the hardest thing that defenses have to do. The communication that it takes to get matched up is very difficult, so make sure that you take advantage of this opportunity when the defense is scrambling. And even if they manage to communicate and get matched up, there's one more area that we need to take advantage of, and that's closing out. So even if the defense gets matched up, they figure out who they're supposed to guard, they still have to close out successfully, which is really difficult. And the reason why it's more challenging in transition is because the offensive players are moving at full speed. Notice how this player catches it and he's moving at full speed. So as this defender goes to close out, he stands very little chance of staying in front without fouling. So if the defense does a good job of sprinting back to paint and then working their way back out to their matchup, always be ready to drive that initial closeout because oftentimes it's going to be out of control. So in review, your first five steps are the most important. Always try and advance the ball with a pass. You create good spacing by balancing the floor and never predetermine who's going to be open. Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.